we uh, filed a lawsuit that sure enough that we were going to benefit in, initially from the uh, lawsuit but I never dreamed in a million years that it would be as far-reaching as it as it uh, did go uh, it changed the uh, complex in the, in the face of the city forever you know when we all joined the police department we joined various times uh, Frank he was the older of the of the four of us he came on in 63 I came on in 67 and I think Clarence and James came on like in the early 70s, around 1970. And we all had our various experience with the police department. Some were good and some were bad. We were watching and, and observing um, discrimination, blatant discrimination uh, in, in the agency at that particular time. A lot of the guys on the police, a lot of the white officers on the police department, they weren't bad. They were serious. They were sincere about their jobs, and they were sincere about treating people fair and equal. But then there were a few just didn't care, and they, they, they didn't hide it. Yeah, you have to take in consideration that during that time, we were coming out of segregation into integration. And it was the practice of the police department to... Uh, to maintain the uh, segregation, uh, segregation uh, attitude towards uh, blacks and uh, unacceptable for me. I, experiencing different things and different treatments, we were excluded from a lot of classifications and certifications and, and jobs on the department and we would ask why and, and they really didn't, couldn't give us a definite reason or a definite answer. At that time there was only about 16 black officers in the police department. When the four of us met over at Rufus to uh, discuss what we intended to do. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do was eliminate the officers that were within five years of retirement. Then we wanted, the, we had to look at who was just coming on the department. At that time, Benny Holder was the youngest officer on the department and he was there with us. And we told him, no, we did not want him to jeopardize his career. But we wanted him to prepare to go through the doors that were going to be open as a result of this suit. And uh, the three of us, along with Rufus, then discussed, uh, I think it was one of, one of the officers that was there as well, Romeo Cole, and uh, discussed the uh, lawsuit and see how it is that we were going to go about filing the suit, and we did with uh, EEOC. When the city was first notified of the, um, of the lawsuit, uh, I was transferred three times in one day. Um, and uh, my vacation was canceled and I was ordered back to work that evening. And once we filed in 1974, it took about two years and in 1976, we got our word back that we were successful and immediately things really started to change and some people got promoted and uh, some didn't that should have and, uh, and then the, the entire city government, you know, the waterworks, the library, whatever part of the city government that the city was responsible for benefited, you know, somewhat from this lawsuit. I see our footprint on all that's occurring right now. You should always have some aspiration to go higher in this agency, and particularly now that the opportunities are there for you. You, you need to, to want to move forward and open the doors for those that's coming behind you. As this Clarence said, if they don't move, the doors are going to close. Uh, for the Tampa Police Department to, uh, at one point in time, uh, we watched Chief Benny Holder become the Chief of Police, the longest serving Chief that, that's ever in the history of the Tampa Police Department. Um, he sat in that office for 10 years as the Chief of Police. Uh, no other Chief has ever been there that long. Uh, Tina Wright to be the Assistant Chief, and um, Carl Davis was the, the Major. So that was three tremendous, powerful people sitting around the table. With law enforcement today and the mayor and the chief and so forth, I could definitely see some changes in it now.